Rocky Johnson, now a... Uh, what a horny bastard. I know, yeah, he's, he's making Vince McMahon look like a... You know, he came from a convent, isn't he? Uh, just, he was putting... Oh, Rocky Johnson, as we say, was putting it about a bit over his uh, career as a wrestler over the years. Uh, about something like five uh, of his illegitimate children and half-brothers and sisters of The Rock have turned up. DNA tests have confirmed it. Um... I'd like to actually know more about Rocky Johnson because I believe you were in Memphis at least when he was there uh, yeah. during a few of his runs. Uh, Rocky's a person, Rocky is a talent, uh, everything you know about him. Well, I was in Memphis with him a uh, long, long time ago. And we lived at a, a monthly a hotel, but you could pay monthly there. And it was kind of a new hotel. It was okay. And he lived right down the hall from me, him and his wife. And little Dewey, which is Rocky, uh, which is uh, the rock now, he was like two years old, maybe three. And I would see him outside the door. Didn't see him too much. But uh, but Rocky was a, a good draw, especially on the Memphis end. And he was, he was working out all the time, quite naturally. And, but, uh, and your question is how he was, he was, his work was what it was. I mean, he didn't do anything that was, he'd do the shuffle, the Ollie shuffle and you do the pop, pop, pop. And, and he had a great drop kick. So he, he at least utilized his, what he had, he, he used it to, to, to its fullest. You know, I never knew where he was from. I read recently he was from like Nova Scotia. Yeah. Yeah. New Brunswick. I didn't, I didn't even know that. Mm -hmm. So, but, and he got to the States and I think he was, I was in Florida with him and I was in Memphis with him. And, but I was never in WWF with him, uh, him and Tony Atlas. But, and I never knew about, I never knew about the, uh, the children because there would be no way that I would know unless I wanted to, to ask around, but, and then I read this article and I went, damn, this guy, he just didn't have girlfriends. He had like, I mean, it, it lasted a while. Harems, it seems. A what? A harem or harem of, of girls had, all around had, the place. I, well, I call it harem. Oh. And that's why we, that's why we say it down south, <laughs> but they were never together. See? But he would meet this woman and they would in one place. And then that would be, I guess, his, his queen in, in waiting. Then he would go somewhere else. He'd have another one. Then he would go somewhere else. He'd have another one. So I guess he had at least five women because he had five kids. And so do, but I, I think if you really told the truth about some wrestlers, they were several that were like that. Definitely. Because there's no way to check it. I mean, other than going off gossip, but they all came together uh, to make this story. But you know what I thought one time, a great serial killer could have been a wrestler because he moves around all the time, especially a mask wrestler. That'd make a good story, wouldn't it? Mm, I'm trying to think who it could be. Yeah. No maskers. <laughs> could have been, but you hear about all these murders they've never solved. It could have been by a wrestler. Yeah. You, you know who else are, are big time serial killers too? Truckers. Yeah. Because they're always on the move. Mm -hmm. Hey, we should be in law enforcement. We'd come in there and our whole deal is say, well, blame it on wrestling. Let's <laughs> check. <laughs> let's check to see what wrestlers were around and let's, let's investigate them first because the people, <laughs> nah, they, they won't have the, the creativity to do that. So <laughs> yeah, but Rocky getting back to him, uh, the, the women liked him quite naturally. He was a good talker. I guess he was a star and he, he had women all over the place. So but what was Rock's reaction to this? I think they reached him for comments and he did not 
comments. I I mean, also, I don't think a lot of people know this, is that, aside from Rocky Johnson putting it about a bit, is Peter Maivia actually had a second family with another woman as well, and and uh, Rock's got, like, a couple of, like, uncles or aunts or something like that, or, or what half. What the hell? Else. What's up with them damn Samoans? I'm not just all over the place. <laughs> Hey, listen, it's a, it's a fact of life just because he's a wrestler mm-hmm. doesn't mean he's going to, he's going to change up, but, and wrestlers, you know, they're, this is why wrestlers have, you know, like girlfriends in different places back then you could run like Memphis ran 52 weeks a year. So you was in that town at least once a week in Florida, you was in Tampa every Tuesday night. So if somebody wanted to find you or meet you, they just go where they know you're going to be. And you're there all the time. Anyway, it's almost like you're living there. So it was easy to easy for women to meet wrestlers and wrestlers to meet women. Can I ask then uh, about Rocky again? I've, I wrote a bit about Rocky, of course, in my book. Uh, it's on Amazon. I plugged it at the beginning. And the two things that seem to come up constantly is one, that he's described as a bit of a con man. And two, he was making a lot of money, uh, especially for the time, about 150 to 175,000 a year in the 70s. That's a lot of money. And yet he never seemed to have any of it ever. How can one run through so much money and save nothing? Well... Say you make one hundred seventy-five thousand. Let's say you make one hundred fifty thousand. You're going to pay a lot of that back to taxes. So let's knock say forty grand off that. Leaves him one hundred and ten. Then he's got to live. And then he's got to travel. And you got to do this. You got to do that. And say he he can save thirty or forty thousand a year. Let's say after ten years, that's three hundred thousand or four hundred thousand saved, but say all of a sudden you hit, you hit a spell that you don't have any work. And then that 300,000 goes down to 250 and then it goes down to 200. And so it's not inconceivable that Rocky spent his money just to live. And, you know, once you get used to a certain uh, standard of living, you don't want to go below that. And, it's not inconceivable, but yeah, he, he, he spent his money just because there was like from 1980, say from 1990 to, to now, unless you had a steady job. And I don't think Rocky had that. When was he in, when was he in WWE with Tony <clears throat> Atlas? It was uh, in the eighties, uh, right? Yeah. 82, 83, 84. That was probably his last, mo- you know, lucrative run by the late eighties. Uh, he was probably, because he was in his 40s when he was having his probably best run in WWF. Mm-hmm. And then by the late 80s, he was sort of scrapping around in Puerto Rico. I think by the late 80s, maybe 1990, he didn't have a penny to his name and he was working as a truck driver or something to that well, effect. That's that's where the money went. It's not inconceivable. You know, it is hard to say, well, he made so much money. What did he do with it? Well, he could have been paying some of it after these women that he'd met <laughs> along the way. And if he was sending money here and sending money there, and, but, but I bet his wife never knew about that. So, and I, I'm, uh, and I think rock, the rock was disappointed, uh, because of his mother, because I think that, I think he saw maybe a lot of things between his mother and his dad that he didn't agree with. 